every single thing that I've done in my life, I hear about it from you. Every single thing. Do you know how annoying that is? But you want me to like have some type of compassion for somebody who don't do nothing but throw up my mistakes in my face. At what point did you feel like a relationship could be molded? I know for a fact. I tried. But I feel like I give you what you give you know, me. Like imagine this, like you're we're business women. Right. You know, we're we have a business together, we're working together. You right. know, uh, performing at youth events, but like right before we go in, we we were just like literally like arguing each other out. Right. People have their own perception on what the twin relationship is. Let us enlighten you. It's not what you think. Now, to set the record straight. Uh, I remember yeah, he once uh, took a knife and he like threatened me. He's like, I just want to kill you. I just, yeah, I don't like, I don't want you in my life. So I was like, he's gonna kill me. Do you like your sister? Yeah. She doesn't like me, but I, I like do. my sister. No, I feel like she doesn't like me. A lot of people were urging us to separate. They were like, look, go this way, you go this way, yeah. you know? But our mom yeah. always told us, do your research. <laughs> she was like, you guys don't understand yourselves. Yeah. You know, you don't understand why your dynamic is the way you are. It's something to being twins. So, off we went to seek answers and change perceptions. First thought that comes to your head when you think about twins, what's your first thoughts? Clones. Clones. Clones, yeah, okay. that's the first thing that can come to mind right now is just clones. Yeah, yeah like this yeah. because you don't think properly, properly and, and we're not ourselves. Mm. I always imagine twins having like a special connection and just like, I feel like twins just like know the most about each other. First thing that came to my mind was identical. That's kind of all, identical or fraternal, but definitely identical and just being exactly synonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they're like on the same wavelength, you know, they're like thinking the same thing, but it's like they're not the same person, yeah. but you know, you see those twin studies. Mm, okay, so where do people really get their ideal of twins from? Mm. History will show. The reference of twins dates back to ancient civilizations, biblical time periods, Greek mythology, and religious symbolism. Twins were seen as a sign of good luck or, in some cases, a representation of good versus evil. And then we became a form of entertainment, something to gawk at, something to stare at. Hollywood took note of that, and twins became a character in their plot. We were creepy, mischievous, partners in crime, and in one country, twins were exiled and deemed taboo. <laughs> I'm Danielle Walker. I'm Dominique Walker. And well, this is the twin experience. Twins sort of have to fight for their own identity. It's so, it's so much a part of our culture that people have to be aware of that. This is Dr. Barbara Klein. She's a twin psychologist, and she's a twin herself. So she really knows her stuff. She's written books, held conferences, and helped twins internationally, including ourselves. So, so listen up. up. Parents should be in charge, and the school is in charge. The most important thing is how parents deal with the twin. Parents need to develop from birth a separate experience with each child, to see each child as unique. And that is the, the most important thing they can do. There isn't a better way to understand the influence of parenting and environment on the twin dynamics than to ask twins themselves. I have a friend who has twins, actually. They literally have adults telling them, like, oh, like, you're the mean twin, da 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 like, you do these things. And they, like, feel that way. And you can tell, like, they'll, like, do things to each other. Like, the one that everyone says is mean or, like, talk back to her sister, like she'll like push her and stuff. And like the behavior that I'm like, I never did that as a kid, but I was like, I never thought that I was like the mean one or like I was like smarter, or I was like a certain way. Like those are just other people telling you that, but we always went home to like a household that my mom was like, oh, that's not true. Like you guys are equally smart. Like you guys have different skills mm -hmm. and you have these things. But I feel like for a lot of times that twins are in that environment outside of home and then they go home and their mom's telling them the same thing that they're like, oh yeah, you are mean. Like, oh, you're, you're smarter, you, you guys have these differences, then they start to feel that way yeah. themselves, and that's when people get like pinned up against each other. I, I'm not gonna use 
use the word hate because it's a very strong word, but we didn't like each other. We used, to, we, we used to fight all the time. We literally like punch each other until we were bleeding and it was, it was such a competition always for who was the best or better at, at something, whether it was uh, a sport or with uh, friends or with girls or with uh, in school, you know, anything. It was always a constant competition to be the best. Avoid seeing twins is opposite of one another, or two peas in a pod, favor one twin over the other. These things really are detrimental to, to developing individuality. So it's, it's pretty deep seed. I work with twins all the time to get over it. I'm, and I can tell you it's, it's a lot of work to get over your, the label they've given you as a child. Others who split their twins into good and bad are borderline, have borderline personalities. And so they see one twin as a part of them, one part of themselves and the other twin as the other part of themselves. And that, that relationship develops. Interesting, right? Remember we mentioned Dr. Kleinhold's conferences? This was one of her workshops on twin estrangement. We learned a lot from it. Parents of twins, we hope you are particularly tuned into this part. You all are a major contributor to the shaping of your twin's identity. But I'm just having a realization of maybe what happened in my life. And so I'm, I'm wondering, am I seeing that correctly? Because I had a grandma in our, in our house who did not like my twin. She grew up with us since we were five, part of the family in the house. And I'm just kind of, a, and I've always wondered why I don't respect my sister. Because my parents taught me to respect her, but my grandmother did not. When you said that statement about the parent is really that primary person that really helped, you know, set them forth and be good and all that. Those, I felt this tremendous amount of pressure, like <laughs> on my heart, and I and I thought, okay, that's why I'm here because I would love to. I'm so I'm married to fraternal twins as well. Well, not both of them, one of them. <laughs> um, and I see I see what happens when they're 50, when they're 50 years old. And so mine are eight. So I'm trying to make sure that that doesn't happen when they're 50 because there's issues there. I think it's important to pay attention to each child individually. Like for example, if my sister, she was the whiner, the complainer. So if she didn't want to do something, we didn't do it. And I, I remember I wanted to take ballet lessons. So we took two ballet lessons until Lisa decided that she didn't want to take those lessons anymore. So we didn't have lessons anymore. And then I can just, there's like, I have lots of examples throughout our childhood like that. Like I took the back seat because I guess she was the bigger complainer or I kind of, now looking back, it seems like she was more important than I was. You know, if the parents are dealing with their own issues, whatever it is, and they're not paying close enough attention, those twins really do depend on each other right. and don't really depend I mean, they don't even realize it on the parents, so I think it's really important what? that parents pay attention and realize that if one child likes something and the other one doesn't, just because it's inconvenient for you, you shouldn't ignore those. You'll feel like our mom, like, uh, what she didn't, she, what she, she, the things that she used to say to us, it was just felt like she just hated us for some reason. And like, cause she used to tell us like, we weren't gonna be nothing, that no, what nobody want us when we got older. Somebody on campus ended up getting uh, the home phone number yeah. saying, oh, you know what one of the twins are in school? Mm. They called, you know what? And I was yeah. like, look, I said, I'm working. I got my own place. I'm good. Well, uh, we're about to pull both of you out. I said, well, I'm not coming home if you're gonna pull Kamika out. Yeah. Cause that's Eventually, not Eventually yeah, they came down there and got me. Yeah, they so, end up taking yeah. both of us out. So, so I had two classes before I would have got my degree. Which I was would have stood up for myself a lot more. Yeah, because we were always like, you know, you you honor your parents, but at the same time, this situation is like, well, she always threw that Bible scripture at us. Honor your oh, father and mother, and your days will be long. Yeah, so that's what kept us close. And yeah, because we went, we went through everything, everything together. together. My son is eight and he had conflict, physical conflict on the playground. Someone hurt him. So I kept asking him, who hurt you? What happened? And I kept pounding away at it. And after two days of pounding away at him, telling me who hurt you, 
he ran off to school and his twin sister stayed behind and she said, Mom, lay off of him. You are pounding him with questions, leave him alone. He doesn't want to talk about it anymore. And she, at eight, just knew what he needed and spoke for him. And when you said the twin relationship comes before the parent-child relationship, they demonstrated every day to me. And in that moment, I'm like, oh boy, they, I'm outnumbered. <laughs> Woo! So it was beautiful but sad at the same time because I, how could I not see what he needed? But she did. I feel like there's like social stigmas around when they're almost too close, but it's like they can't help it. You know? Did you all ever separate? No, really. A lot of twins kind of go their separate ways or yeah. don't like the same. I mean, we grew up really liking the same thing. Yeah, we dressed, dressed alike, alike all, okay. mostly all our life. Mm -hmm. But I think because we dressed alike a lot of times, people thought we didn't have, have our, our own identity. identity. That's, That's the thing that bothered us. Exactly. Yeah. No, we were always in different classes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we didn't really see each other until after school. Went all through middle school and high school. We chose different classes. Different colleges. Yeah. Jeff did wrestling growing up and I did basketball. So even though we did sports, we did different sports. And we both were terrible at baseball. <laughs> we only played because our older brother actually started and he was actually he was really good. He was good. So was like your brother like a kind of like a role model for you guys? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of like the role model as like what not to do. I get what you're saying. So, we thought it was really important to show Steve and Jeff's upbringing with their older brother. It demonstrates how twins and the attention they receive can sometimes overshadow other siblings. Even though he has, out of the three of us, he has the highest IQ and highest like potential to do well, he just never... He never did anything about it. Well, like when, for six and a half years, it was just him in the house, and then we were born, that actually... As like a six-year-old child, he told someone, I don't know if it was our mom or like a psychiatrist or just a friend, that he felt blue. And that apparently, for a six-year-old to say, is really telling of how sad he felt. Mm -hmm. But our parents were so involved in dealing with the newborns that they didn't realize how, you know, depressed he was as a little kid. And I think that resentment still like goes lingers. on today. Yeah, yeah, lingers. And... So then growing up, Matt would just do all of the things that you weren't supposed to do. So yeah. are you all both really close with your parents? Yeah. Yeah. Like any other set of twins, so your parents would dress you up alike, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? They buy you the same toys, if anything similar, right? Yeah. You know, but because uh, they want you, to, they want to be fair. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, but um, yeah, um, growing up, they, they stop us from whatever we want to become, right? Yeah. If, you want to be, if I wanted to become a doctor, I could have done it, or Eric could have become a lawyer. They, they, they didn't want us to be both lawyers or both doctors because we're twins, right? Like when I was in kindergarten, this girl named Lindsay kissed on the cheek and like was flirting with me, but I didn't know what flirting meant. But then I was like, oh, why did she do that? I like, I wish that guy did it. But <laughs> in our middle school and high school years, our primary friends were all female. And then so at the music camp, we just connected with the females more. And then they, they were like, oh, we just assumed you guys were gay. And I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, well, um, and so then I told them, they're the first people I told. And then I told Steve and I asked if he was, and he said no. I told my mom. And then like it was like this long awkward like conversation. <laughs> I'm just like God, like why don't straight people have to like? Tell her? <laughs> then they thought that I was just being saying I was gay because many male musicians are like are gay or people mm -hmm. in theater. So then they made me like go to this counselor that was like really cre creepy and awkward. <laughs> and then finally I told them I was like, look, I've known I was gay for like the longest time. My parents just figured it out because I told them, or they probably knew, and I just confirmed their suspicions. So they're the ones that need to go to therapy. <laughs> and then he was like, all right, we're done. I just told my mom that I was, I said, I think I'm gay and I'm questioning my sexuality. And I was just like, I'm gay. Okay. They, they at first said, like, you don't have to copy Jeff just because he's your twin. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why would I be copying Jeff? <laughs> and it was awkward with them for like a year to two years maybe. Cause like when you went to college, you like, Got your ears pierced, and you started wearing like sleeveless clothing. I just remember going to your like 
affirm it and be like, oh, he's like, gang it up. <laughs> Our mom was like, Ugh. like in the car, like, <laughs> like, like, Steve got his ears pierced and now he's like dating a guy. I'm like, oh, it's all just happening so fast. I'm like, <laughs> all right, people. A common misconception is that twins are exactly alike. And we do share a lot of commonalities. But as you can see, we are two different individuals. Rachel and Nicole make that pretty clear here. Our parents like gave us like their attention because there was just two of us. So it was, it was nice having, I mean, a close relationship with both of our yeah. parents. Yeah, their whole thing was like making sure neither of us felt favorited. Yeah. So they like always tried to make sure that they distributed the love. I, guess. <laughs> I mean, people don't really. I feel like in high school and stuff, people would be like, oh, I can't tell you guys apart because like. Rachel's a nice twin, or like, I can tell you apart because of this, and I'm just like, that's what you think. I remember I had teachers in college that like, I had your sister, like, she got through this easy, so you should yeah. too. Like, sports. Oh, yes. All the I time like sports, sports was like, probably yeah. like the worst. We did cheerleading, like competitive cheerleading, and like, you kind of do the gymnastics tumbling side too, so with tumbling things, learning different skills, they'd be like, oh, well, your sister could do that. You should do it the same way, or like, or they try to teach this. us the same way. Yeah, it's like, like it doesn't work different. for different people. Yeah. Like, you can't just like think that we should just do everything exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Like, our parents did a good job of like showing us how to deal with it and just kind of like block it out in a sense. Even yeah, though, like, and sometimes it did change the way we think, I think for the most part, we handled it. Yeah, I think I always like told my teachers too, like I'm a different person. Yeah. <laughs> or like I tell people like now, even when they're like asking small questions. It's like people like are that. still asking that, like yeah, who's we, nicer? I'm like, we're adults. Like, yeah. <laughs> why are you asking? Yeah, who's we did the like a, a live like DJ stream yesterday. People still try to pin us against each other. Like, who's like mean? Like, who does this? Um, fortunately, we never really had those uh, comparison where oh, he's, he's this but, yeah, yeah. and it's that, you know. I guess it's also the way we were brought up. Our parents never compared us, mm -hmm. or never showed favoritism, or oh, yeah. Eric did this yeah. better than you, or you know. Yeah. It's, uh, actually, it's it's actually fun, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's so, always fun, you know. Very young, we experienced that from our friends, schoolmates, uh, family. Oh, you are this, you are that, you are this. So we never really liked those comparisons because we thought well, we're twins. We can't be more or less than mm -hmm. the other. People really do not understand the attachment that twin share makes them closer to each other and that that's what's interesting about twins, not the fact that they look alike. That's just a very superficial um, feature of twinship. Sometimes with twins, we like to like group them together and not really see them as you know, two individual people. It's like, oh yeah, they're the you know, so-and-so's. So I mean, I think that's kind of interesting, the whole comparison, because, I don't know, the individual twin might feel like they're losing their individuality. I have cousins that are twins, and even though they're not identical, um, well, it makes it so they can be compared even more. They're like, oh, well, this one's prettier, or this one does this, and this one's arts one, and this one's this one. And so I think it, because they are assumed to be similar, it makes people point out their differences even more. I don't think I'd want to be compared like that. <laughs> I think I would give me anxiety, maybe, like, thinking that, I'm not as good as the other twin, or thinking what other people might be saying. The non-twin world is made up of non-twins who don't understand what it's really like to be a twin. And they ask stupid, intrusive questions like who's fatter or who's smarter, who's richer. That's how I got started on this. I felt like, what am I, a rat? I'm being tested to see if our, my genetic structure is the same as my sister's. But I think it is cool to compared to and just kind of like see the different perspectives between them. So I think when it's for like to get to know stuff more it's good but not when it's um, kind of putting pressures on it. Speaking of twin studies, the following clips will explain why scientists are so intrigued by twins. Studying from the cradle to the grave is really the whole spectrum of twin studies. To link up the uh, factors associated with the environment in the womb with risk for later disease. Epigenetics is the way the environment changes the way our genes work. Identical twins share the same genetic code and this epigenetics is a really wonderful new tool to look at the way the environment is changing the way our genes actually work. So there you have it. Our genetic makeup is impacted by our environment and twins have helped scientists prove this. 
But what about the powerful effects our environment has on our behaviors? And how does this impact the way we interact with each other? Did you guys ever fight? Oh, like, oh my God, every day. Yeah. That's what we got here. We were yeah, fighting. We were fighting. Yeah, we're fighting. Yeah. 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 I think that is the same thing. Like, there are times that we would fight and we say harsh words to each other. Yeah. Right? If you were to say that to other people, they probably will we'll never talk to you again. Exactly. Yeah. You know? exactly. But with us, we don't even apologize to each other. Yeah, we don't, yeah. yeah exactly. Anything. And no matter how bad the fight is, I mean, um, you know what I'm saying? Um, it could get serious. It could get really serious and hit each other. Physical. You know, hit, yeah, physical. Yeah. Oh, but a couple of times it happened in front of our wives. Oh my gosh, yeah. We were having a meeting, you know, how we're going to approach, you know, going to events and stuff. But we always uh, contradict each other, right? Or we just don't like the ideas sometimes and we argue about that. Yeah. But we got physical. He got so upset that he picked up a, a glass of water and pour it, uh, throw it out at me. And, and then I go, so I got mad and then I started um, hitting him. And then he threw the, the glass at me. <laughs> and that, we got very physical and then I was like, they so we have to cancel there. the meeting. <laughs> they were. We have to cancel the meeting. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they, they started getting upset. But that, yeah. that was it. I mean, five minutes later, we're okay again. Yeah. yeah. But see, just, people don't understand that. Yeah. 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 It like, would we look don't scary want... to other people, you yeah. know. Yeah. But to us, it's like nothing. And then, you know? and so then we're just communicating. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We're just expressing ourselves. Yeah. 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 And not all twins are alike, which I wrote in the in the nineties. Um, I show different patterns of twinship, how twins get along. Some twins who don't have enough parenting um, develop an interdependent identity and rely on each other too much and enormous difficulty separating. Twins who've been treated as um, halves of a whole, where one twin is the good twin and one tw the other twin is the bad twin, have very difficult relationships. They're ashamed of each other, they fight with each other, and they sometimes end up being estranged from one another. Shonda and Shandy's dynamic had similarities to our own interactions. They were gracious enough to come and speak with us during a time when their relationship was not on the best terms. But they weren't the only twins experiencing conflict. Another set of twins we scheduled to interview were so much at odds, they canceled before we had an opportunity to speak with them. Um, we started off looking extra, like... A lot of like as we got older, you know, we started dressing different. Actually, that was her idea to start dressing different. I've mm -hmm. always wanted to look like my sister. We got in high school or middle school or something like that. She started mentioning my weight. Keep in mind, I was smaller than the weight I am now. She's always called me fat. So that's always been like a does she hate me type thing. Or, you know, I was like, why is she always complaining about me? Why don't you focus on you? Because now that I'm the size that I am now, like, what, like, what do you want? So she still wants me fat. So I'm like, you just never satisfy. So when she says things or when she voices her opinion about certain things, it goes in one ear and not the other. Like, whatever. I'm so numb to a lot of stuff that she says. <laughs> they over identified with each other and they see themselves in their twin. And, and if they don't like it, they... It can be too overly <laughs> direct. It's an unspeakable accusation. A twin killing her identical twin. It echoes that of the twin who was accused of murdering her twin sister by driving over a cliff in Hawaii, reportedly punching each other right before the fatal plunge. Twins might escalate to the point of wanting to harm one another. They're stuck. You know, one feels powerless, one wants to be in control, and there's this endless sort of fighting back and forth. I like my sister. And I've always liked my sister, but I feel like, if we're being honest, I've always felt like she's looked down on me or thought she was better than me. So I don't, the relationship now is just kind of weird. It's like an awkward space. I'm not going to sit here and just dismiss, dismiss the fact that we have been having issues lately. Mm -hmm. And she knows just as well as I do, we're not on the same page with a lot of things. So I would say it probably all started when we were younger. I do feel like she wouldn't make big and she talks about my weight all the time. So I kind of have this, mm, it's just always thinking that she's going to judge me about this, that, and the third. Because she's very picky about everything and she has an opinion over everything that I do. She knows I like her. But my thing is, some things I just cannot tolerate. Like. Even if it's something as small as hanging out with friends, 
Shanda will go somewhere and we'll be in a group and Shanda will just be acting like she's having a, the worst time ever. It's just miserable and I don't like that. So I'm like, I don't even want you to come because you're going to be a Debbie Downer the whole time. And she takes that as me not liking her and me not wanting to be around her. Liven up the party. Like, what are you doing? And it's, it's annoying. So I'm just like, uh-uh. You know, and I don't include her a lot because of that. We've had our fair share of, you know, ups and downs, but we always went to, this is like recently, but we would go to like therapy with, okay. and then just say what was on our mind, and then the therapist would be like, oh, well this is what he said, what do you think, or, you know, and just work it out. So this was like necessary in order for you all to even really communicate? Um, for things to like, uh, to go for working. We like play uh, sometimes a lot on cruise ships, and one line hired us for five months, and so we were in the same room for five months, and it just like didn't work. It's a picture, yeah, from that end of the room to this end of the room as your living quarters, and share that for five months. So, what will be <laughs> some of the things that you all would like dispute about? Like, well, I'd get shit faced. <laughs> If she's going to be around me, around my friends, I want all of us to look good. And I want all of us to look, I mean, we don't have to look like just alike. It's just like, hmm, kind of fit in. I don't want you to stand out. I feel like I should be able to wear whatever it is I want to wear without being judged. If you know that's not something you like, fine. That's just your personal opinion. This is what I'm going to wear for tonight. You know, leave it at that. My thing is image. My thing is we need to look cohesive. We're twins. We need to look alike. But when you had the opportunity, you chose not to. I don't want to dress alike. That's two different things. I don't mind. I'm like, we're twins. We need to look like twins. But we don't have to dress alike. Why don't we just look like twins? Twins have a lot of influence on each other and have to work really hard to get over that. Two people have a conflict is based on fear. And the fear comes from the inability to connect to your true essence, which it really is love. Once you connect to that again, you realize that no one deserves, no one, including you, to be treated with any disrespect or, or anything that is not equal to love. We have um, a lot of issues to resolve. Yeah. That's why we come together, because we serve uh, as mirrors to each other. So every time I blamed him or I saw something in him that I hated, didn't like or what, that was just, he was just serving as a, as a mirror. Uh, understanding that was difficult because I was like, no, I'm just recognizing that in him. No, I was not. I was recognizing that in me. And that happens to everyone, not just with uh, twins. Right. Uh, especially when you have to work some karma or something with someone at a very high level. Then it's like, you know what? Now we're gonna be twins. Shandy was crying because of you, Shandy. You were still over there hugging her. <laughs> you know? I'm kidding. I gotta be still gonna hug her. Like, and that's just it. Like, we don't care. Like, we're still gonna hug each other even when we're punching each other. Facts. No matter how much we disagree or find ourselves in conflict, we must always remember to never take one another for granted. Life is short. And our time together is truly precious. Twin loss is like a, much more serious than a loss of a sibling or even a, 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 a mate, you know, a husband or wife. I lost my brother Mark September 15th to stage 4 stomach cancer. He got misdiagnosed a few times. They told him he had GERD, acid reflux. So, you know, based off of that, it's like cancer just hit him off a surprise, you know. They gave him three weeks to live. You know, he lived for a full year. He fought it, he fought it. You know, went through several rounds of chemo. Chemo was poisoning him. They offered to remove his stomach. That didn't work out, you know. But he was, he was a fighter, he, he fought it. It was pretty painful, you know. Um, I cried a lot, you know. Like, um, I didn't let him see me, but it was hard to look at. Like, like he was literally deteriorating, you know. Every time I seen him, he looked different. That, um, cancer was eating him inside out. Like it was pretty traumatizing. You know, it, it, it kind of uh, decreased my senses in a few areas. 
It's like, as he was losing things, I felt like I was losing so It affected me to the point where I had to quit my job. You know, I couldn't really work for others. You know, my tolerance level was low. I was angry, you know, I was all sensitive. So it was really, it was, um, it was a rough experience. You know, it kind of um, crippled me in some areas, you know, made me feel a little weaker, like, it was it was hard, you know, to try to um, to feel bad about wanting to do something, and there was nothing I could do, you know. Like I was willing to give up pieces of myself, you know, to give to him, but the doctors wouldn't allow it. So it was it was it was a tough pill to swallow. You know, like, I wanted to help, but can't do nothing, you know. So I try to remain as positive as I can when I get around him, because he fed off of it. So an identical twin brother who committed suicide. It took me a long time to admit this to myself, but would, I would feel this sense of relief. It gave me a sense of individualism that I wasn't receiving and had never had before. Which instead of people going, oh, how the boys, how the twins. In, in that way, I, I, found, um, I found positives in the death of my brother. As unhealthy and as much as being a twin frustrated me, make no mistake, losing that person is 100 times worse. I'll say now I kind of feel like Sometimes I got on blindfolds and trying to feel my way around the world again, you know what I'm saying? It's like a whole different, everything is different, you know, looking at a different set of lens, you know, even though I had my own individual pair, but combined with his, it was like a whole, like everything is different, you know what I'm saying? I'm different, my interaction with others are different, you know, um, everything is different. It just feels like it physically, I could feel an absence, you know, I could feel a sense of alone. Like earlier when you mentioned how I felt when we both were, you know, living in separate places, but even though we were in separate places, I could still feel him alive. I could still feel that he was he was there, you know, but now it's like I'm by myself, you know. A lot of people masks fell off, you know, it showed people for who they who they really are. I lost a lot of relationships I thought I would keep. Um some shied away because they didn't know what to say, you know, and they felt insecure, you know. Um, some strayed away because it, they felt like there wasn't much more I could do for them. I'm not the same person, so I'm not being able to give as much as I used to. And um, that was different for a few people, you know. I lost my fiance, you know, because I'm different, you know, and um, something she just couldn't accept anymore. And, um, you know, going through this process and losing her, like, that was like, that, <laughs> you know, but for me, luckily, my heart was already broken from losing my brother, and it was like, you know, I took it, it was, it was, it was, it was devastating, but, you know, um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of, a lot of relationships got affected, you know, in a negative way, you know, but some positive, you know, I met a lot of good people. Joining support groups, you know, I joined yeah. support groups from twins who lost their twins, um, I've uh, remained social, you know, um, encouraging others, you know, not feeling alone and then and letting them know they're not alone, you know, the pain is real, depression is real, you know, some things you just can't shake so easy, you know, and it's okay, you know. Beginning, it was, it was cool, it was exciting, you know, it was new, it was different, but then it became depressing, you know, because um, people were living like 15, 16 years feeling like it was just yesterday, you know, and um, that's something I wasn't ready for, you know, to um, process it that way, you know. That was too advanced for me, you know. So uh, I stepped away from it for a little bit. You know. I needed healing. <laughs> I would say I still, I think like, I, I believe he still gives me signs to make me smile or make me feel like not alone still yeah. here with me. Earl made us realize the value of our relationship, and it's truly a powerful bond, even in the afterlife. The bond between twins is so powerful that there are bizarre events that cannot be explained, as evidenced by the following clips. Little twins from Sweden, Ursula and Sabina Eriksson. But then, all hell breaks loose. Then, her sister Sabina also makes a break for it, running onto the busy motorway, and she's hit by a car. They believe the sisters are high on drugs or alcohol, but 
I was living in Sydney, I was living in Melbourne. <laughs> I started lactating. But the whole time she was breastfeeding? Yes, yes. And then the same thing happened when I was pregnant to Nicole. The scan showed that I was all clear, there was no problems at all, which surprised me to be honest. I just had this, I guess, gut feeling something was wrong. What did your scan show? A tumour, I guess the size of almost a tennis ball in the middle of my head. Throughout our quest for answers, one of the most shocking revelations was learning about the taboo surrounding twins in the deep country of Madagascar, Africa. I, I think it's very unfortunate uh, since primitive man we've seen like many cases of cultures and different environments uh, looking at twins as uh, negative aspects of the environment or whole kids that uh, bring curses. Uh, and I think it really just represents life, um, life in abundance. Twins, they are not like common children. They are to be rejected. In the deep country, they are not considered as... When twins are rejected, they often end up here. It's called the Katja Orphanage. It was clear to us that controversy and judgment is something that twins face globally. And in this case, it led to the abandonment and exile of twins. The true blessing is that we do not have to face the scrutiny alone. And if we don't allow the comparisons, the labels, and the enmeshments of identities and boundaries to divide us, we are stronger together. You can't let people's action and what they do to you affect, affect you and how you want to actually turn out. You want to, I always have that mentality that I want to be better than what we grew up in. Yeah. Uh, in Chinese culture, the yin and yang, it really, everything in life is balanced. So twins, we, we do believe that we come representing that balance. And even in the energy work that we do, we work with different energies. But in the end, as much as DNA that we share, because we do, our minds work completely different, almost opposite. Mm. Actually, they work opposite. So when you can find that advantage and use it to help your own uh, twinhood, your own brotherhood, your own relationship with your twin is just a beautiful thing because it stops being a competition and it becomes a compliment. Yeah. We've been working together so yeah. long that we know our strengths and our weaknesses. Yeah. Even right. though we look alike, whatever, but yeah. one of us is stronger in certain things and yeah. the other is stronger, and we know that and we're okay with that. Yeah. Right. Where some people might be offended, you know, okay, I might not be as good in this as she is, whatever, right. but we're not. We're like, hey, if you're good at that, great, go for it, do, do it. it. This <laughs> ain't, hey, more than Mary, you right. do it. And that's what we do. <laughs> we just kind of bounce and feed off of each other. I don't know, it's, for me, uh, I, I love working with my brother even though we fight a lot because, you know, he's my brother. I mean, he's my best friend and I can call him my worst enemy, but, you know, it's probably my, my worst critique, you know, but, you know, but, um, he's my brother. Don't let any lingering resentment stands go dress it head on. And it's so weird how I'm always looking for a best friend or always looking for someone to connect with and I have a built-in best friend here yes. and we just can't buy. So I'm like, maybe in the future we can work it out. Yeah, um, I feel She like, honestly yeah. helped me grow up faster. Yeah. And she doesn't know that. But if it wasn't for her, I would have never had my own place. I would never have been out there working my butt off trying to do what I needed to do. Yeah, she pushed me right on at the door of my parents' house and got me working like I needed to. You don't need to be identical in everything and yeah, and you embrace your like my brother said, your own uniqueness and you see that it is your advantage to be different and respect those differences, you all of a sudden act like magnetism that attract, you're going to start having a better relationship mm -hmm. because you are so different then all of a sudden you start attracting more to each other rather than start separating each other because by trying to be the same twins always what they're doing and I feel they don't understand when we don't, we don't understand that before we were get, growing apart mm -hmm. because we wanted to be so alike 
that we disconnected. But when we embrace our uniqueness and act as individuals, then all of a sudden we start uh, becoming stronger because now we have this and this, whereas before we wanted to be just this. The biggest thing that I learned is really like true collaboration. Um, so many times I think that even though you're twins, you might think that you have the best idea. I think that that was like one of my problems, definitely like going into DJing. Like I always thought that like she has a good idea, but at the same time like mine's really good. And like being able to let go of it and like, like have like that open platform of like, okay, we can't just both sit there and say we have the best idea. Like let's lay it out and listen to both of them and be open, like genuinely open, not just say that you're listening, like <laughs> actually listen to the other person's ideas and like take it into account to really make it the best. Cause twins honestly have the best synergy. And when like you put back like all your differences and everything and truly just like put together your ideas, that's where the magic happens. Brother, who can you, uh, who else can you trust more than you? Twins, exactly, right? uh, exactly. You know, so you know that he's not gonna, Cheat you, cheat you, not you yeah, backstab you, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, you can always trust them, you know, no matter how many, how many arguments you have, right? Right, you know, maybe a third party would help, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, you know, the two of you can survive on your own if you really want to. I feel like there's a lot of stigma about therapy, but I would just say go because it it helps, like, there's nothing, nothing negative could happen by going to it. Yeah. You know, realize that everyone's human and, you know, you're not going to do everything perfect. You're not going to like play everything. Well, I guess for us, it's play everything. But if you're business partners, you might not do everything perfectly or the way that you would perceive it as perfectly and just be receptive to the fact that there are more ways to go about things and, yeah. you know, just be open to you know, the other person's idea. Letting go of your ego mm -hmm. is like such a big thing, just in every, like not just in a twin relationship, just every relationship in general. Like mm -hmm. you have to let go of your ego because your ego is like what is feeding you, telling you like, I have, you have the best, best idea. idea. Like my idea is yeah. like better than what she's saying. It's like, yeah. you have to let go of all that. And like, we both have our strengths and like you can really play to each other's strengths when you're not thinking about what you're best at, you know? Yeah. The more twins are able to find their uniqueness, embrace it, and, and know that it is an advantage to be different regardless of the looks, be sharing looks, then you, you can create so many things and, and be that magnetism, that love, that unity. Uh, generally when we come to this world, whether we're siblings or whether we're just individuals, we all have different identities and twins are the uh, only real outlier to that because it's a shared identity. It's that they are, they're literally like the same makeup. Um, I think when you kind of dig deeper into people, you, you realize that I mean, just what's on the surface doesn't totally make up someone. So um, when you have relationships with twins, you do realize like how different they could be. Uh, I, I think coming into the world at the same time doesn't um, in any way mean that they're going to be uh, uh, closer than um, siblings who are like 10 or 12 years apart. Um, so I think it really just depends on the circumstance, environment, and their ability to connect. I'm a loner in a lot of ways, so I would probably definitely want a twin to kind of match my energy. I think it'd be too much for the world, but... <laughs> Throughout our research, we learned that the twin relationship is impacted by parenting, environment, labels, comparisons, and our own interpersonal relationships with one another. In regards to our own relationship, we had to understand that our closeness did not mean we can impede on each other's boundaries. And although the world lumps us under one identity, the twins. twins, we are indeed individuals. We also realize that what we experience is not that unique from what other people who are not multiples experience, especially within our social and political climate. We all grow up with our own hangups and insecurities, whether they stem from attempting to meet other people's expectations, social beauty standards, or a lack of self-awareness and identity. In conclusion, the twin experience is the human experience. But amplified. We are what we call our name. Life makes us sound who we are. And it's just because we are what we call our names. What will you be remembered by? You are, 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 you
Rita. My name is Eric. And I'm Chris. Jamie. And I'm Shonda. I'm Jeff. And I'm Steven. I'm Ray. And I'm Nicole. I'm Kanika. And I'm Kamika. My name is Marco Bellata. My name is Miguel Perata. My name is Earl. My brother's name is Mark. And this, and this, and this is the... And this is a, And this is a, The twins. The twins. The twins. The twins. Put your foot in her mouth, running round, tell me.